technical difficulty. Uh, we have a tech, 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 tech. We have a tech, 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 tech. We have a technical difficulty. We have a technical difficulty. We have a technical difficulty. We have a technical. <laughs> Y'all know for real, I've been having technical difficulties all day. Technical difficulties all day. And this is the reason why the video hasn't been uploaded. But now we finally recording. I finally got it corrected and fixed. So let's just get into the video. I just had to get that in there real quick. So as y'all know, I did my deep dive in, in the search of our history and the things that we were doing in America. Now, this is part three to women in slavery getting they get back. You feel me? In no way, shape, or form am I making this video to make people hate white people even more, spread more hatred, spread more anger. I'm not doing that. I'm doing that so their stories can be heard and we can be able to hear the real history and we can get deeper and deeper into real history because that's my favorite subject. Okay, so as y'all know, September 3rd, 2008, David V. Baker did a full context on the historical events that happened with our ancestors getting their get back. Arts and convictions brought severe penalties for slave women. Mostly southern jurisdictions hanged or burned to death slave women for arson. Arson was a crime appealing to slave women because they often did not have the physical strength to confront their white masters. And arson was a powerful way to deprive whites of their property and injure their economic well-being. Slave women burned their master's house, jails, shops, wheat stacks, and agricultural buildings such as mills and barns. Slave women were 30% of slaves convicted for, of arson in colonial Virginia. These figures give some perspective on a method of these women, women employed to counter the powers of their masters. Maryland officials executed Jenny and Grace. They were two females belonging to this slave master named John Joseph Galloway. They were executed for arson in 1751. Y'all look, I'm just confirming the real reason why they ended slavery. The amount of fires that our ancestors was causing and they kept doing it. They didn't stop. Even after somebody's head was publicly put on a stick just to like scare them and make them feel fear oh don't do this again or this will happen they continued to keep doing it let's just start in 1780 there was a slave girl named violet she got very tired of her master she didn't want to do it no more she didn't really care about her life at that point because you you knew what the repercussions was gonna be um so she burnt her master's house down and you know when she went to the courthouse they convicted her and then um they hanged her and cut her head off and um displaced it on a pole for months just to scare people just to make sure they don't do it no more right uh, let's just go to 1788 there was a slave woman named Dina and she was hanged in New Jersey in October 1788 for poisoning her master's wife and then after she poisoned the master's wife she said that wasn't enough she wasn't filled enough that does that didn't really do anything it didn't really feel the justice she didn't feel like she got her get back so after that she burnt down his barn so she killed she killed the master's wife and burnt down the barn at this point, even after putting the remains publicly on display in 1790, Nellie, her name, she was a slave, she was hanged for burning her master Jeremiah Vanderbilt, I think that's his name, Jeremiah Vanderbilt's house in October during Halloween time. Okay, so have y'all heard about the 1793 fires in Albany, New York? And like they burnt down 26 houses, that's like $200,000 in damages. I'm gonna just give you a little backstory. In 1793, a fire erupted in downtown Albany that destroyed many of many offices, shops, 26 homes. Arson was suspected almost immediately. They already knew it was our ancestors. And many of the city's wealthiest residents, like the wealthy shops, all of that stuff got burnt to the ground. Most of them, most of the owners of these houses were slave owners. They already knew it was they already knew it was our ancestors. We wasn't going for it. 
We was not playing. So apparently in the text, three slaves were involved in setting the fires, including two female teenagers, 12-year-old Bet and 14-year-old Dean. Both of them were hanged and their accomplice, a male slave named Pompey, teenagers. They didn't care. They was at the point where like, it's do or die, let's get this done. Like they knew what the repercussions was. They knew what was happening around town, what was happening down in the South, and they still didn't care. They were still setting stuff on fire. Okay, so you know how in 1861, the Civil War had started, right? Basically, the Confederate people, they end up shooting and firing at the Union people. And that's how, you know, the Civil War has started. The down south people want to smoke with the up north people, basically. So, around that time when that was happening, our ancestor named Melina, she burnt her master's barn stable, the corn house, and the tobacco house. She said, oh, let's get it popping. Let's get this war started, for real. Like, she... She was the one who really like got it started for real. She also convinced her friend or lover, his name was Andrew, he helped too with the with the with the burning and stuff. He was like, oh no, I heard they was back there. I know I heard they was over there fighting, so we gotta do our part, you know. Let some news come out about them about a war fighting for slavery going on. Oh no, they was actually helping, trying to fix trying to trying to burn down the stuff. They trying to burn down the cotton fields, they burning down the tobacco houses, the corn houses, the barns, the stables everything all in you can't even you can't even bring the plantation back to life they was putting their masses out of business even though they was trying to impose harsh punishments they didn't really care they still kept doing it all the way until slavery was over with and then they did it afterwards too we're not even gonna get into that we ain't even got down to that part slave women also manifested resistance to bondage by assaulting or poisoning overseers and owners breaking the tools and burning barns to lesser extent slave women resist included controlling reproductive and maternal functions such as inducing abortions and committing emphasis. One Tennessee physician confirmed that slave women use medicines, violent exercise, and external and internal manipulations as rudimentary birth control or to affect miscarriages. Damn. During the Annabellum Adam Ballum period, smothering accounted for more than 60,000 melanated infants deaths during that period. So, you know, Annabellum, it means during the 13 colonies that the, the 50 states ain't even finished yet. And we already then lost 60,000 babies. But also malnutrition, planters overworking pregnant slave women surely contributed to infant sudden you know, and because of these situations and circumstances, this had a lot to do with them thinking that we didn't have the emotional or the the mental mind to actually look be looked at as humans because that's the type of stuff we would try to do to save our children from becoming slaves and they just think like how could a human even do that so it, it made them think that we're not humans even more honestly reading through all of this is kind of like emotional because it's to think about all of the stuff that they had went through but i'm i'm actually doing this and making this video to heal my ancestors heal the pain that they felt the energy that they had to feel at that time by letting their stories be heard we gotta get this we gotta let this out we gotta let it out and let it be known this one really like oh my god this story i'm about to tell y'all is but it's kind of really some girl in the basement type like story and if y'all watched the girl in the basement you know what happened I don't even want to talk about it. It's really disgusting. Okay, y'all. Uh, so this was Florida's forgotten execution. Y'all remember we talked about the Celia in Missouri, but we also got to talk about the Celia in Florida. Okay, so there was this judge named Jacob Bryan. He was in the Eastern Circuit Court in Florida's Orange County. So that's like where the Magic Kingdom is, kind of in Orlando where all of the Disney parks and stuff is. He had a slave named Susan, and then he had four mulatto daughters with Susan. And Celia was one of them. This is not a picture of Celia. This is just like giving you a reference picture of like what a mulatto slave would look like. Celia, her mom, her other four sisters, all of them were slaves to Jacob Ryan. Some of his slaves he had freed, but he kept Celia. Listen, I don't know why he freed some of them, but yeah, Celia was still there. When Celia got older, I think like 15, 14, 13 or something, he ended up making his moves 
on his mulatto dart. And later down the road, she ended up getting pregnant and having four more kids by her father. If you can imagine the rage that continuously built up by this disgusting man. When Celia was 30 years old, Jacob Bryan, her father slash slave owner, freed some of the slaves that he had. Celia, Celia's kids wouldn't be free. So she was over it. She was already over it after after the first assault, but she was over it at that point. She lost her marbles. At 30 years old, Celia was about to be punished by Jacob. Jacob had to be like 60 years, 70 years old. We still trying to get the facts of the story right, but they had to be outside because she picked up one of these holes and tried to protect herself with it. Like, please don't come any closer. Stop hitting me. I'm, I'm, I'm not playing with you this time. He's still trying to attack her as she's trying to bag up, holding a hole like, hey, you better bag. He got closer and she split his head open with the hole and battered him to death. When she realized what she did after doing it and 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 just battering him till his to his his skull was open and split in half she, she she ran she ran she ran as fast as she could because something flicked inside of her head to where she just was over it she got caught though um we already know how that situation ended but they did try to have a whole court case you know, to fi figure out what happened. Most of the time, you don't really get a court case. The dates of when she was hanged kind of get mixed up because there's different articles saying different things. Her, they also killed her family too. And because he was a judge, like they tried to set an example, like don't try to come at, you know, the government officials. But in the article, she also, she blamed her mother. And this story is from FloridaCourtHistory.org. This is like an own record. So I have to correct myself because apparently Mr. Brown Brian, common law Negro white. Celia's mother, Susan, she was kind of a slave, but also the wife of of Mr. Brian. So his 11 remaining children and grandchildren were considered his personal property, not relations. It's just a whole lot of mixing. I can't tell who's the daughter, who's the who's the child. They all was related to Jacob Bryan. I it was yeah, literal long story of what happened afterwards with the with the courts and who was gonna die and what was gonna happen to the kids and all of that it was just it's just a lot honestly it's hard reading through all of this and trying not to get in that state of frustration and anger oh my gosh it's still so many more stories in this article that this man has wrote that's the end of part three I'm, I'm debating if i should do a part four it's just it's just a lot of frustrations that comes up when you're reading it i'm gonna put the link i'm gonna put the link to the article if y'all want to read it personally i'm just my heart my heart is it's, my heart is hurting from that y'all stay dangerous this was just a history lesson honestly they're not gonna teach this in school so i felt the need to get these stories out ah listen this is this is why it's hard for me to try to do a part four i can't say i'm gonna do a part four because it just I, oh my gosh i'm trying not to let it bring me down but it just it, it's reading all of that the stuff that they left out in the history books is just like really disrespectful really disrespectful so it's just i have tr i have i have been trying to heal my ancestor that is enraged from all of this but i love y'all they dangerous